All right, so there's a question about adjusting the timing. So what I would do, and you can read the question in there. So you create a free image plane, right? And then on this here, you control A into your options. So you have either an image sequence or a movie. So as for image sequence, so I'm gonna open this. I have an image sequence from a referencing I did a long time ago. Then you say use image sequence. And then as you play this, you can see that's how it goes. So I'm going to cap out right there. Now, there are a couple ways. You're mentioning taking this and then you can break this. And then you set a key here, right? Take that, set a key, and then you continue to set a key and so on. I'm going to take this here, show you what I mean. That is one way for sure. But the thing is, you don't really have to do that. So if I go back, if you go back into your channels, you can see that the image plane has the frame offset. So if I set a key here, go forward, set a key, a couple pops, because that's, that's my, uh, that's my uh, footage there. But you can see that, let's say I want to go from here to here before, let's say before the pop. And then you take this and then you want to go backwards. You can just take this and go backwards with that. You look at frame offset. I'm going to go backwards, drag this middle mouse, and you can see how far I'm going with this here with the value. Because this is the frame range. Now you go forward and you can see that I'm go back. And you can, you know, adjust the tangents and you go back and forth, blah, 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 blah. That's, to me, that's how I would do it. That's the fastest way through there. You can also, it's, I don't know. And if you want to do that, it really depends on, on your workflow. It's the first one is my preferred version, but you can take this and then you go into, in your animation, or you're in your animation tab up here, go to key, scene time warp, add scene time warp. Now the whole thing here, this is from beginning because all the way to the end. So on this here, you can set a key here, you can set a key here, whatever it is, right? And that time warp, this is from beginning to the end. You can see at the end of the frame range is 83. That's your 83 here. But since I'm here, again, before the pop, let's say here, I can go backwards now by grabbing this and going like that. And you will see how, let me go back. Here we go backwards and then we go forward. And now you can, again, you can, have this much faster and then you know however you want to do this with curves or with keys it's totally totally up to you but you can see how the footage now goes back goes forward a lot faster and then goes backwards again you know you can go all the way back into the minus here right and then it it's dead because it's we're in the minus and then it goes forward again that's another way uh it really kind of depends on what you prefer I am more in the category of offsets, but I use that every now and then when you have a whole animation thing, you want to kind of retime it. Um, that would be when I use uh, a time warp. But if it's just for an image sequence, to be honest, I would take the frame offset and then you can, you can see, you can go back and forth and keyframe that and do that. That would be my answer. There you go, that was question number one. The rest is more text-based where I'm gonna read through uh, the questions and then answer them the usual way. If you've never seen this, that's how I do. So that way, if you only listen to this, you don't have to watch this, so that's question number one. You can just listen to me reading the question and I'll give you my two cents. That's how those Q&A work. I'm gonna blend in this question as I always do. It's a long question and at the end it just asks, uh, what is appeal? So uh, you can read the whole thing if you want and we'll leave that up as always. Uh, and the, the appeal question, it really depends. Uh, it's very subjective. Like there's so much that goes into appeal where it's the design can be appealing, the animation can be appealing, the posing can be appealing, um, just the way it moves, the form, you know, the simplicity of it. It's just, or even just how a character just kind of behaves in the acting can be very charming. There's just so much that goes into appeal. Um, it's a longer answer. And to be honest, since this part two is, it's been quite some time. Um, I highly recommend the Anim School channel, first of all, and they did a whole thing, so 10 minutes, I think, uh, for appeal. I'm going to blend that in here, I believe, and I would say watch that. It's going to be much more in-depth and more interesting than I'm going to say, and it already has answers there. So actually, I'm going to redirect you to that other channel, 
And that's how it goes. Next question here by Dragon Skunk Studio. Do you have a guilty pleasure for an animated show or an animated feature film, as in something you enjoy despite understanding that it's not really held in high regard? That's a good question. Do I? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know what's out there that people kind of go like me. Um, probably the closest would be Fire and Ice. Ralph Bakshi, this is rotoscoped. People have opinions about rotoscoping, tracing the animation like that. I don't know. That's I saw that as a kid, uh, and I always kind of liked that. This guy in the mask and you know the weird ogre type creatures and just the music was great. Of course, I've never seen it in English, but I saw it as a kid, so it was in German, uh, and I always loved the the voices. I would say probably that one. Um, I don't know what else is out there that people don't like that I would like. Um, I don't know. There's always something where like, oh, I like this and the people, because it's popular, they, they don't like it. I don't know. Um, I would say that one is going to be my answer. Is this your final answer? It is. Then Nat, Nat Tome is asking, can you talk more about animation internships and how to apply for an internship? Thank you for your time. Right. And I responded there. I'll do my best. It's been a while. Anything specific about the application process you need to know? There was no answer to that. And my answer right now would be the same, uh, that it's been a while. And I don't know. It's basically you will have you would have to look at is this an internship that's usually internships are tied to a school. So you have to look at uh, is that something where you are finishing a semester or it's a middle of the semester, you go to that company, do an internship, and you get credits for it, then you go back to school and finish, or it's your last thing and then you graduate, that type of thing. Um, that's different than like an apprenticeship where you're done with the school and it's something else that you do. So it really depends on. Uh, again, many factors that probably I'm too old that uh, I don't remember. So that's that would be the biggest thing to me is is if you are at school, check the relationship of your school with other studios if they've done that before, uh, and if not, maybe it's a new studio and how how that works with your school and the credits um, and and all that good stuff. Again, I'm too too far uh, removed from that process. That's my honest answer. Even though it's a non-answer, I still include it because I wanted to address it since people. Uh, took the time to comment. Which boy is asking you, do you think it's worth it to learn Blender right now since it's not used a whole lot at studios as far as I know? I would say yes, just because you just never know how bigger companies go about things in terms of their pricing structure. Like Maya goes up and down until they have Maya Indie and sometimes it's, you know, like they had something where it's like the student version, but then that goes away and then it comes back and my indie is now cheaper than the full version, but who knows how long that is going to last. So it's always like if you have access say to Maya, which is it's used a lot and you have it through school and it's free, I would use that just because it's more used than Blender. At the same time, you can start Blender at any time. It's free. Try it out. And it's to me, it's always a good thing to have another other uh, software as a backup in a way, just in case, um, you know, Maybe that studio only has Blender, and now you suddenly know more than someone else who only knows Maya, like myself. But at the same time, just know that the majority does not use uh, Blender. So it's also kind of for you to decide what your time management is and where you want to put in that time. Does that make sense? Do you want to spend that time learning Blender while not knowing Maya? Maybe you should know Maya first, and then you have a bigger chance to get a job somewhere. And then when you have that job, you learn Blender as a backup and just to learn something new and maybe you like it better. You know what I mean? Like there's there are many factors there, but it really, is it a hobby? Do you just want to learn something? Sure, why not? Um, are you a student who needs to get a job right away and you need to be able to to apply everywhere and be appealing to appeal, <laughs> appealing to many companies in terms of your skill set? Then you have to look at what they are using software wise and then maybe Maya will be a better, um, a better path for you. Again, it's, it's very subjective, many answers. Uh, I would say yes, with, you know, it depends on your priorities and the time that you have. The Sauerkraut's fan, that's the name, is asking, after breaking into the industry by getting a job as a game animator, feature was initial goal, several months into work, it started to feel like a job. Even if the work environment was great and I was getting treated really well, the feeling dwindled a little and I started questioning if any corporate gig I get in the future it's just a leaking bucket of motivation. That should be like a channel name, leaking bucket of motivation. 
Do note that I'm new to the industry and I've got no big responsibilities and a lot to learn. How does your daily animation job feel after all this time in studios? What's changed? Love your vids, vids as always, cheers. Well, thank you for loving my, my vids. Thanks for taking the time to watch them. Um, what has changed? To be honest, nothing has changed except that I love it more. And maybe it's just because, like you said, I have taken on different responsibilities throughout the time that I've been animating and working. So you, you know, you, you're an animator, you learn, you get your shots and you get more into sequences. And then as you become a lead, you help out your team with those sequences and shots and assets, and then you become a supervisor. It's just, there's always something new there that keeps me going. That's really interesting. But at the same time, if my next job is quote unquote, just an animator, which to me, there's no, there's no value difference between being a supervisor or an animator because I love animating. Um, like that to me is just the biggest thing. Like to me, it's not, yes, it's a job. It's, it's everything will always be a job. But the thing is, I love animating. That's just the thing. Like I love the process of animating. That's why to me, there's no, like there's no value difference between being a supervisor or, or an animator in terms of my motivation, like the value of, I, I love to just animate, but I also love to supervise as I'm doing right now. So maybe that is different where, I just never saw it just as a job that gets boring because I just like doing my job. I like animating. So, which again, is it's very, it's a very subjective thing. So maybe that's just not really what you like, but maybe continue on. And then as you gain more experience and you have new roles, you know, maybe you'll be a lead. Maybe you like that a lot more. Maybe you like more the managing aspect of the animation industry. And maybe that, that gets you going. Um, but yeah, it really kind of all depends on the type of project you've been working on. It was, it's easy for me to say, well, I love animating and then blah, blah, blah. It's because, yeah, my first job was Star Wars and I was, and I still am a big Star Wars fan. So it's not like I worked on, and I mean, I have worked on, on movies that I wasn't a big fan of or where the content wasn't as inspiring. And then, so yes, it's more, I have more motivation to work, let's say on a Star Wars project. But at the same time, animating is animating. So even if I might not like the end product, the movie, you know, the direct, whatever it's like the whole thing, like I'm not a fan, I'm not gonna watch even that movie. The process of animating for that movie is to me just as enjoyable as let's say a Star Wars project, just because, or a Star Trek project. It's just, I like, like I said, the process of coming with ideas and blocking things out and going through the iteration process and finding new ideas, discussing things in dailies. I don't, I just, I just like that. So to me, that's what, what always made it not a job. Also, I came from Switzerland, so as kind of like an immigrant, you know, it's that big travel to a different country to find their dream job. Maybe that's, I I have more value in that. Maybe like, you know, if I never had to leave Switzerland, you're like, ah, it's just the job that I, that I took there. Maybe it would be different. Maybe my motivation would be different. But for me, it's like this whole thing of, I left my, my family, my friends, the country, and came here and this was this whole new, you know, life that I built here that's also tied to my job and I don't know this maybe there's so much more to it to me being in this industry maybe then then for someone else probably I'm sure it's not maybe but yeah it's just everything's too individual so maybe that's why to me this was never never really a job so I don't know I don't know if that <laughs> if that was an answer what time is it yeah I waste a bunch of hours saying all this um yeah it's it that was more I guess a personal anecdote but uh yeah this i mean that's how that's also the question that's how i feel uh, there's nothing really that has changed in the negative you know i just i just still love it i love it more than before because there's more stuff that i've learned and that i can apply and and i know more that i don't know so there's more stuff that i want to learn and at the same time don't forget as much as i love it that my what i always tell my students this is still an exchange of services i'm at a company they pay me for my services and it's not like I'm gonna work for free or, you know, like it's always gonna be, hey, you wanna work? Okay, what are the hours? What are the payments? You know, we need to, you have to do this in the evening. Oh, is this overtime? Yes, yeah, so to me, I'm very black and white in terms of it's an exchange. I'm not gonna do this for free. You need my services. I have those services. I'm gonna give that to you for an exchange. That's just how it goes. But within that, I love it. I love the animation process. Anyway, it's a ramble. Now it's turning to a ramble. Hope that helps the Sour Crowds fan. Twister TH is asking, hello, sir, question. So here's what I was thinking. 
If you ever had an opportunity to make a reboot or remaster any old obscure forgotten media, a video game, comic or cartoon series, what would it be? Cool question. Remaster or reboot? You know, I always liked, uh, it's a poster in the back. La Marque Jaune, uh, it's Blake and Mortimer. This is a comic book series that, I mean, exists as 2D and they've made, you know, animated, like Tintin, they made into movies and not the CG one, but the 2D animated one. And, uh, that stuff exists, but I would take the dynamic of Blake and Mortimer and and redo that, especially La Marque Jaune. So I have that poster over there. If that was a, that would be a dream project for me to adapt into a movie. I love to, to make that. Um, yeah. Or Gargoyles, just because it's on my Twitter feed right now. It's, it was an awesome show. Disney Plus has it right now. Uh, I would love to take that into, not me, but I would love to see that into, um, just because I was saying not me, just because I don't, I'm not worthy, but it's just such a great show. The voices are great. The story's cool. And it would be really neat to see that as a modern feature movie. Anyway, that's just me. After seeing Spider-Man into Spider-Verse and Bad Guys, where do you think 3D animation can go next? You know, that's a good question, and I don't know, just because it feels like there's always like the, this 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 new thing of animation, and then it stagnates and something else comes in, and then everybody copies, like Spider-Verse came out, everything is on twos now, like that style, and then it starts to kind of broaden and kind of a mixture, like Puss in Boots has a bit of everything. Uh, and then I'm sure after all this, it's going to stagnate because it's always the same, and then something else is going to come up. Um, so where can it go next? I think hopefully exploring that further into the style change and timing change of movement and design. It's very broad, but so it's not like we went for such a long time into CG has to be photo real. And then it kind of deviated more by, you know, CG became better at cartoony stuff, squash and stretch and just more stylized timing. And then Spider-Verse just made it a lot more popular to that specific look. And then I love bad guys. And that just took it into just double down on that. I would love personally to continue with Spider-Verse and Bad Guys, to be honest, and just double down on that for I don't know how many years, because I love it, while at the same time doing then something new that's maybe pushed in more graphic stuff, um, where it's, it's not like you want to emulate 2D, because I would love to see there's a 2D version of a movie, not like 3D emulating 2D. But then that goes the whole thing to the pipeline, and is which one is more cost effective, and blah, 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 blah. But something a bit more graphic would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm also old, and with that comes also, I'm also, I like what I'm used to, you know what I mean? Just to be honest, um, I was used to the photoreal look of things, and it was totally fine, even though it got kind of old, and especially the, the mixture of cartoony or stylized designs, yet the textures are photoreal, the hair is photoreal, or the hair movement, the water is all simulated, photoreal in terms of timing, while the designs are not, that this clash is always was always weird to me. So I like that everything is getting more cohesive into where it's all one design. Like the the the, the design of the characters and the world mix well together. It's not like a stylized character on a photoreal background. Like it's always kind of weird to me. So now that is is getting better. And I think just taking that further, you know, into yeah, I don't know. Something just, just kind of get, gets more graphic with simplified designs in terms of just the shapes and maybe movements that can still tell a longer story. I don't know if that makes sense. It's more of a ramble thing, but uh, I'm all for just pushing the design as far as you can until, <laughs> until it's almost abstract. Why not? That could be interesting. But I don't want, I don't want the existing look to go away either, if that, if that makes sense. I would love to see just multiple iterations and versions of something, but I, I am still fascinated by CG that tries to be photoreal. I, I like that too. And I like I like the cartoony aspect of it. And I like the photoreal aspect of things. I think as long as I don't want something to replace something else, if that makes sense. That's why I still like pixel art, the classic 2D animation. I like all that stuff. And I would love to see more of that. And it would be great to expand on this. Again, this is more ramble than, than an answer, but that's my answer. Have you seen any Jack and Dexter games? I have, haven't played, but I have seen them. I'm asking because the animation, those games are truly ahead of its time. They're awesome. I wonder what you think like of them. I, I, what do you think of them? I love them. They're great, for sure. Can you give us your list 
or top animated movies that you consider to call inspirational? Inspirational? That's a big ask, again, I'm old. To me, I think my answer would be, depends on my mood <laughs> and depends on what I'm looking for in terms of inspiration. Because sometimes you have stories where like the sea beast, I liked a lot. And I liked just because it was the story revealed at the end and kind of the message behind it was really neat. And now I, I, that to me in like a, a story aspect of it is, is inspirational where it's, it's, it's not your classically or a classically told story with, you know exactly where this is headed. Like, so a little bit of twist at the end, like, oh, we can take this further where the look is cool. Everything looks really great. It's well done. But then it's at the end, not quite what you expected. It's almost like, if you want to take, I just saw recently everything ever, everywhere all at once, which was so good. And that to me, like that had a really complicated setup and background and action and all that stuff. But it told a very simple and not in a bad way, but a simple family story, mother, daughter and understanding. Like it was just such a human story in such a spectacle. I love that. And I would love to see that in, in, in uh, animated movies. And just to answer that, so like Spider-Verse, I thought was really great. I love the story behind it. I love the, the, the look of it. So that to me is very inspirational, it was just to look. Um, but then, you know, I'm also, like I said, I'm old. Like I like also classical, like Disney type of movies, fairy tales, buddy, you know, like your little, your little sidekick creature. I like all that stuff. And, and it's not like inspirational in terms of, oh, this changed my, you know, you, you would watch the latest Disney movie, and, oh, this is changing my life and that's what I want to do. For me, it's just like a, an element that I like out of that, that it's always inspirational to be like, oh, I just like the, the feeling of this and taking that and maybe applying that to a future product that I'm doing on my own. Um, same thing like Miyazaki stuff, like a classic, you know, I'm naming the classics, but same thing where it's like I watched um, Spirit of the Way with my little one just recently. And it's just, I love the designs, the story, but how, how so much more out there it is and less kitty in a way, like Western American kitty in terms of, you know, like the, the classic cartoony kitty movies that, that, that American um, the culture has, you know, produced so far. So I love when you look into that same thing with like French movies where the, the animated movies are just again, like a totally different feel. And I think, I think that would be my answer in terms of what you consider inspirational, where it's always like, there's something that I can grab out of any movie that inspires me to, to apply that or learn more about that. I would say that's my, my long winded, almost non answer. Um, because I think that's a different thing than, than like you said, versus just movies that you like. You know, there's always movies that are gonna inspire to do more. I always like Ghost in the Shell. Again, I'm old, but like when 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 she is diving, and just that the 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 atmosphere of that and what they're talking about, and then the music with all this. Like I love I love Ghost in the Shell so much. So there's always. Yeah, to me, it's always like there are always elements in a movie that you can take out. Now you might argue, okay, what is one movie that has it all together? I would have to look at what's out there and then to form a more educated answer. But I don't know, there's always something. Like to, I, to this day, I love Ratatouille. Um, I just love, again, the, the atmosphere of it. And for me, it's, it's like, I love the acting and especially the facial animation in the movie. So that, I would always grab that. Um, and I always love watching, let's say, Toy Story 1, just because it's it's aging. You can really see like some of the animation, the posing, non-IK legs. There's so, so many technical glitches in that movie. But then after a couple of minutes, you just forget about it and you're totally, I'm still totally invested in, in the characters and, and the story. It's just, it's just such a fun movie. And I think like for that, I would take out the inspiration of it doesn't matter how it looks or how it ages. If the characters are interesting and appealing and the story is around those characters is interesting, it, it can just grab you and take you on that ride, if that makes sense. Uh, so for me, it's always, it's, it's that. Like sometimes you watch something like, ooh, I don't know, that looks kind of wonky. Do I really want to watch that? And then you start watching you're like, oh, this is really interesting. I really like it. So like, stuff like that. Um, and that's not just for animated movies. Like I said, it's for live action as well with everything everywhere 
all at once. It's always something that you can you can grab. Although I would I would name that one as a top not animated movie. That was just so cool. So I love I love that movie. Anyway, long ramble answer. These are the Q and A's. These are that's what I do. Sera Yagami is asking, please skip if this isn't an intended career question. Uh, let's not skip it. Because of how my life and career life went, I've dropped three animation two times. Once after graduation in 3D animation, and once after I restarted 3D animation and got rejected. Ooh, sorry. I had to go forward with the skill I had at the time to get a job because I'm not rich and I don't want to burden my parents. I understand that. But now I do have a job in a AAA company, although not as a 3D animator. So should I continue practicing animation or give up and continue the position I am in? That's a tough one. And every time I get questions like that, it's kind of the BS um, like excuse answer of, well, it depends <laughs> and it depends on you. What time do we have here? Put my battery on there. I still have an old camera on, I have a half hour max here. Again, uh, it just depends. Because it's easy to say, don't give up, right? But I'm not in your situation. Like, I don't know. I don't know how you feel right now at that AAA company where it's you have just enough fulfillment, even though it's not in 3D animation, but maybe it's enough to pay the bills and you can just do animation on the side a little bit just to keep that flame going, just to have that, you know, the pleasure of animating. Or, or you feel okay, but not really inspired, not really like, I don't want to do this forever. The inner dream is still to do 3D animation. I mean, like, these are all uh, questions that only you can answer. Because it all depends on, like, how old are you? How much time do you have? How much energy do you have? How much, you know, do you have the financial means to maybe leave that company and then practice again through animation to then go somewhere else and try something? You're like, I don't know. There's so many factors in something like this. And it's always a tough question um, when, I, when, I, when I get a comment like this, um, should you give up? It just sounds so, it sounds so devastating to say you, you give up. And at the same time, it's not, the thing is, it's to me, it's the, old, the older I get, I always feel like, well, it's worth a try. And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Because to me, it's like, it's not like, even though I just said before, like, I love my job. Don't get me wrong. I love animation and all that stuff. But my identity as a human being is not tied to my job. I'm very comfortable not working. <laughs> and with especially being home all the time now, I, I would love to just be home and do nothing as well. And then my wife would do all the work. She's taking up more work now, so it's more split. But I can totally see myself not working anymore and, and just do nothing. And by nothing, I mean just not working as like a day job. I would take care of the house, help the kids, learn how to cook, uh, stuff like that. So I'm not, like, I don't, I don't need a job as a fulfillment of my life and identity, if that makes sense. But some people are kind of more tied into that because personal people that I know, um, and maybe that's you and maybe Maybe you need that in your life right now to feel accomplished. Like that was my goal. That was my dream. I wanted to do this. I never got to that. So you feel just like you never proved something to yourself. Maybe that's always the dangerous thing. Do you want to do 3D animation because you love it? And it's something that you want to achieve for yourself. Are you doing it to prove it to someone else or to make uh, other people happy? Um, I think there's so many, there's so many different motivations and, and, and things where it's like, is that really the important part? But then again, it becomes, you know, subjective. Like I'm, I'm doing animation because I love it. It's not to prove, let's say to my parents, like my dad paid for school. So yes, I was motivated to do well so that, so that it didn't feel like a waste of money. But if I had studied animation and I didn't like it, it would have sucked to switch and do something else, but I still would have done it because ultimately it's still, I still got to find something or at least try to find something that I enjoy to pay my bills and move forward in my life and so on. But it wasn't something like, oh, I can never quit animation because my dad paid for school and I cannot disappoint him. It's like as much as I obviously not tell him thank you every time I talk to him, but it's not, I don't see that as a, like, I don't have to do it because of him. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not tying my, 
uh, or his expectations to what I have to do, if that makes sense, a bit of a ramble, but. So what I'm trying to say is that there's so many aspects in terms of giving up and not giving up and following your dreams. Because giving up doesn't have to be negative. That's what I'm gonna go back to before. It's like, it's okay to try something and if it doesn't work out, you stop and you try something else. I think not everything, it's like when you work on a shot and animation, not everything has to be for your reel. You can just also just try stuff and practice and, and be okay if it doesn't work out. And maybe it's important to try things out so you know where you're not fitting in and where, what you're not good at so you can do something else. I don't know, that's kind of, I don't know if that's an answer. It's a rambly non-answer, but um, it's just so subjective. And I hate to tell you, no, man, keep going. Don't give up. Quit the other company and keep going. That might be horrible advice in your situation because I don't know your situation. I don't know you personally. So it's a non-answer, I guess. Next one is by Daniel Brito. Daniel Brito, Daniel, I don't know. Uh, as always, name, uh, reading names is always tricky. Hi, Jean-Denis. Ooh, my full name. Well, thank you for typing Jean-Denis and not Jean. My question is, what is the best way to apply the fundamentals of animation in Maya? I am struggling a lot with this. I understand the concepts of the fundamentals, but I am having a really bad time trying to apply them in Maya to more complex animation like walk cycles. You know, you just answered your own question. I think the, the that's what I tell my students all the time. It's you, you gotta be careful to not take on something too complex because it gets overwhelming. You run out of time, you, just, you can't get to it. So you are saying here, more complex animation like walk cycles. I would make sure that you apply the fundamentals of animation on simple exercises. Keep it super simple. You know, when you have anticipation and timing and silhouette and all that stuff, do all, do all that where it's a head turn only or like a facial take or just a gesture with an arm or I have to say standing up, sitting down, keep it really simple so that you can specifically apply one or two fundamentals into a shot that's really just like two, three seconds long so it's easy to understand and finish and digest and move on and blah, blah, blah. And build on that until you get to something more complex. Because the thing is, the danger is that when you skip the fundamentals or like an exercise that, that gives you nice, easy steps, that you suddenly go into something too complex. And then that just kind of breaks you down where like you're just overwhelmed, there's too much to do. And it might like hold you back or scare you to do something, to try something, you know, to try English, something else. It's just go step by step and it's okay to do small exercises and understand something really well and then move on. Because a lot of students that do a bouncing ball, do some other smaller, like a pendulum or something, and then they wanna go straight into a lip sync assignment. It's like that, it's just, there's so much more before that you gotta do. So even with a walk cycle, if you're specifically, you know, you wanna do walk cycle, maybe just wait and just do a step. Someone standing, stepping forward and stopping or a sidestep, whatever it is, right? Or, or a turn, because then you deal with the mass of like moving the route with slight anticipation, slight weight shift into moving, but not too fast because there's some certain momentum. Like it takes a while to move and then you stop, but not too quickly, otherwise it looks too light. So you have to kind of stop, overshoot, push back, and then settle into standing again. So instead of doing full cycle with arms and elbows and shoulders and head and foot rolls and popping knees and, and hips and everything. Imagine, okay, it's too much, just do one step or even just a lean. So you get used to on how the hips work and then the change of the hips with the chest. So I would look at what, like if you want to break it down for yourself, what are the elements of a walk cycle you have to attack, right? So you get head movement, chest movement, arms, legs, blah, blah, blah. So you go, okay, I'm gonna first do a little exercise with each separate piece. Just something with the head, something with an arm swing only, something with just a foot roll or a step to get used to with what the hips are doing and at what point are the knees popping and how do you reduce that and so on. So I would break down a walk cycle into smaller separate pieces, do that, practice that, and then go back into the walk cycle. Hope that makes sense. All right, next up is, whew, that is Priya Ranjan Pani. I, just, I, I always apologize, sorry, the name. Sir, in the starting of my career, can I took reference, not tracing, from 2D anime shots to do my 3D animation? And what is the fundamental difference between the stretchy cartoony animation versus realistic cartoony animation? Okay, let me unpack this. Um, so first question, yes and no. Yes, you 
can look at 2D animation, anime as well, and try to apply it to 3D. Why not? Because to me, it's always like anything where it changes the your your thinking of timing and posing, and it's great to find something that you enjoy. Like, oh, I want to use this, and I want to. That's inspiring. I want to animate that in 3D. Like, it's just it's you you shouldn't take on exercises that are boring or where you're not interested in. Like, it's the motivation. It helps just to go to continue on with something that, that you enjoy. At the same time, not everything will look good taking from 2D to 3D just because of the 3D look, the more complex look. If you don't change the textures and stuff, it's gonna, like, you almost expect a specific movement style. Like if you hold, like anime and, and certain 2D you know, work, you have a lot of held poses. Or just the drawing, that this one drawing does move. Put this on a CG thing, it just becomes, it's just, a, it's a rendered image and then that's it. But because there's so much more detail in it, it's like it's, it just feels dead. At least in 2D, this it's you can get away with hell poses so much more because you kind of project more life into those drawings. But when something looks already lifelike, but then it's completely dead and not and doesn't move, it just looks odd. It's subjective. But I just be careful with with that. And also, there's always to me the difference between practicing things and having fun with it and looking at reference and blah 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 and then your ultimate goal and by that I mean is when you're done with all of this um is this a career that you want to have and what are your career options what are the companies and what style do they have meaning if you do stretchy cartoon animation all the time you love all this this is a fictional scenario and the only company that's around you does only photo real creature animation then that's, then you have nothing to show. You can't apply there, if that makes sense. Like, I'm just very practical. It's always something where you can do whatever you want at home, practice, have fun with it, and then look at, okay, but does that time spent on this, is that good time spent or should you also spend time on something that's gonna help you get a job somewhere? If you need the job, you mean like there are also people might, you might be super rich and, um, and you don't need a job, all you do is practice. I mean, like, again, this is why I always say everything's so subjective in terms of who needs what and where they are and country and the financial situation and so on. But I'm just always very practical. Again, it's maybe being an immigrant where it's like, I can't just do nothing here. It's always, well, not as a student, at least, you know, you, you have your OPT or your optional practical tra training, you have your visa. So I can't just sit around and just practice stuff and have fun like i always had to focus on yeah but this needs to be on a reel because i need the job because i need someone to sponsor me so i can stay in this country that's just was always my mindset for so long that's why I always that's always my answer to so many of those questions is that you can do all this and yes starting your career you can do that and maybe because you have fun with it but then if you know you have to look at what does your career look like ideally in your head where are you? What are the companies? Do you have options to go to another city, country? What kind of companies and what is their style? So whatever you're practicing at home, does that apply to the style of that company you want to work for? I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I would always kind of balance that of having fun, trying things out, and at the same time being also practical in terms of you already spend so much time on something, hopefully it leads to something else that will help you move forward. This is such a I hope it's not too vague. I hope that makes sense, but anyway. Uh, and the second one is the difference between stretchy cartoon animation and, and realistic cartoon animation. I mean, realistic and cartoony is tricky to put together. Like to me, realistic cartoony would be like the humans in earlier CG movies. So I'd say like Toy Story 3, the humans are fairly realistic. They're cartoony, but they're fairly realistic. Versus to me, like the humans in like a Hotel T are not like in a Pixar movie. Like they are much more, like there's just such a divide there. Um, so you have to look at that. It's, it's an interesting pairing of those two. Because the stretchy cartoon animation, you can go really crazy with that type of style. And versus like the cartoony animation style has so many different sub styles, if that makes sense, right? But the moment you, you throw in realistic cartoony animation, uh yeah then it really depends like because to me realistic cartoon animation is not lion king the latest one because that's realistic animation with not even that much cartooniness to it it's every now and then in some of the aspects but that's really leaning towards realism so realistic cartoon animation too would be like rango 
where it's cartoony, but then the whole render and everything is more on the realistic side. So like, that's to me more like what I would consider that. I don't know. Maybe it's also, maybe it's also the, the question of the, I don't understand or, or the way I'm reading into this, but it's, it's almost like you answered your question. Like one is stretchy, the other one is realistic. You won't have the stretchiness in realistic work. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I feel like this is the Q&A with the most non-answers and probably the most rambles. I don't know. I don't feel very confident in this Q&A uh, part. Oh, yeah, another question. Sorry, don't be sorry. Another question. What is walk cycles or is walk cycles good for portfolio and how long a fresher portfolio should be? Um, walk cycles, I mean, depends. There it is again. I would say it depends. Um, game companies. It's my, my usual answer would have more usage in terms of walk cycles. That's the type of work that they also do versus in feature animation. It's more about acting and performance where walk cycles could be something in the background. Uh, I think if it's if it's a really well done character based with fun personality, whatever personality uh, walk cycle. Yes, totally fine. But a whole reel of just cycles sending that to a feature company, I would say probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, that would be my, but it's anything for game company. You want to show a bunch of stuff. So it's, to me, it's always variety is the best for your portfolio. You want to show off, each shot should show off a different skill, hopefully, or at least don't repeat the thing. So my thing is always for students, if you do a great weight lift, it's like a box lift, right? You wouldn't do it twice. There's no need to do two shots showing off the same action. Pick the best one and put that on your reel. But the reel should show off multiple things. You're good at humans and creatures, maybe vehicles, camera animation, for you know, depending on the company where you could show a bunch of stuff. Or if it's if you are the company where you will never animate the camera, don't worry about that. And it's just all about the characters and the personality and the acting and all that stuff. But even then, you will have range where it's a young character, an older character, and you know, like that type of stuff. So anyway, that would be my answer for that. And how long should a fresher portfolio be? Uh, I'm also a bit out of touch. My answer nowadays would just be a minute. I mean, within a couple of shots, you just know. If something, something's gonna work or not, after a couple of seconds, usually, but that's even like long time ago. After a second or two, you just know if the movement is correct or not. And then it comes into like, oh, is it entertaining and blah, blah, blah. But 30 seconds, a minute, you, you just know. Anything above a minute, I mean, I can see maybe a minute and a half. It's kind of long though, nowadays. Back in the day, when I was a student, uh, it used to be three to five minutes, which is bonkers. So you just, as a student, there's no way you have three to five minutes of material. But nowadays, Sometimes when, uh, sadly, like a, a company closes and, and the seniors there, they put their reels online, it can be three to five minutes. But that to me is more like, this is everything I've done as like a showcase of that's my, the work that I've done at this company. But it's, I personally would not send five minutes of, of material to a company to apply somewhere. It's just so much work. And with five minutes, unless everything is so different, you're gonna have also a lot of repeats, there. I said. Um, so I don't know. But I'm also a bit more cut and dry in terms of portfolios where, again, every shot should just be like, this is the best thing ever. And sometimes you see in demo reels where it's like, it's super short, something from the back or like something far away that might tell a longer story within like seven shots because it's part of a sequence. Yes, but then you need to show that. Not really. You can probably just show that one shot. That's your your winner. Like to me, I prefer something short and awesome versus five minutes that have awesome things with filler in the middle. That might just be me. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my longer answer here. And I think that is the last one. That is the last one. All right. Well, then there you go. This was now 13 plus my other ones, probably like 40 minutes ish, something more or less, oh, maybe a bit less, uh, maybe a bit more actually, maybe close to 50. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching or thanks for listening. Uh, there's more, there are more questions. I've been kind of behind on all this, but I'm gonna keep going on the series. It will be part three and four for sure. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to browse on my channel, check out other stuff. Uh, and if you wanna know what the previous questions are, feel free to go here. <laughs>